Thanks very much, uh, Mary. And you know, um, despite the headlines uh, that obviously I, I see every day and work, wake up to on the, uh, the radio and see on TV, uh, we actually are leading the world in a number of areas in terms of public health, uh, not only in relation to salt work. Uh, I actually, when we, 1st of July this year, when the smoking legislation comes in, uh, that will be the biggest exhibit size anywhere in the world. Giving full respect to our Irish colleagues, Scottish colleagues, and colleagues from New York and elsewhere, but it will be the biggest exercise in the world. And alongside that, I have to say, uh, I attended a, a World um, Health Organization conference uh, in Istanbul last year, where the theme was health inequalities. And again, whilst that is a challenging area for government and others to try and tackle, uh, we are, I think, if not the only, one of the few countries in the world to actually set ourselves uh, some really challenging health and equality targets. And clearly, as with other areas of public health, what we eat and what's in what we eat is an important part of tackling uh, health inequalities and other issues such as uh, um, uh, heart disease, undoubtedly, uh, to the sort of foods we eat. Or to be done, uh, government can't do this. That's why uh, it's so important and other organisations who, uh, you know, keep us uh, on our toes um, are able to uh, raise this debate in other ways that government can't do and keep the challenge not only on government but also on the food industry and food retailers to think about the impact that they have and uh, what they can do to be good partners with those who buy their foods. And whilst um, uh, there's more to be done, there's no doubt about that, and obviously uh, Deirdre and the Food Standards Agency are key to the work that sort of helps government to deliver in this area. And I've no doubt about some of the complexity of issues around salt, and we're beginning to talk about other issues around uh, fats uh, too and sugars as well. Uh, there has been progress, and I think it's quite clear that there is a growing awareness amongst people about the impact of salt in their diet. I suppose going back to health inequalities, um, what I'm interested in focusing on uh, in uh, the uh, next phase, I suppose, is whether or not that awareness, but not just awareness, but changing behaviour, is something that is equal in most communities, because I think that is a real challenge. Uh, awareness is one thing, um, supporting people to change their behaviour in this regard is far, far more complicated but also importantly that we don't have a situation whereby those who live in our poorer communities are left behind in terms of what changes are taking place. There is some really good news and some trends indicate that things are starting to impact on how people purchase what they eat. The latest figures, for example, for the purchasing of fruit and vegetable, vegetables shows a 7.7% increase in the last year. The year before that, uh, was only a 0.02% increase, and the year before that, it was actually going the other way. So we can't be complacent, but there does seem to be uh, a sort of, not only an understanding, but an understanding that seems to be translating into action by individuals on behalf of their families, and we all have a role to play in that. Cash, the FSA, government, uh, stakeholders that we work with, and I see a number of the NGO organisations here today, but also importantly retailers. And what's been quite exciting uh, for me is how this issue around healthy eating in particular has, uh, has in some ways found a new edge. And that new edge does seem to be about the competitive edge. That suddenly actually thinking about healthy products isn't something we uh, are encouraging because it's the right thing to do, of course that's important, but it's also about the fact that shoppers actually want to know who's on their side. Who is supporting them to make those healthy choices? And clearly we have an array of organisations here who are demonstrating how they're going to do that. The key issue though is what works for the consumer. And that's why we're working with the FSA and uh, uh, um, individuals from the industry side but also the NGO side to evaluate what works best for shoppers. The labelling issue is very crucial to this, I think. Um, what will be interesting is to see uh, how people purchase their foods based on what information they get, which steers them to choose those uh, lower salt alternatives, but also rethink about what they put in their trolley or their shopping basket. Because I think the next challenge within all that is once that starts happening, and we know it is happening, 
how that will have an impact on others to think about more reformulation of the food that they produce. And we're already seeing that uh, in some products. I see it when I go out shopping. Uh, now, <coughs> advertising saying we're using lemon instead of salt, we're using more herbs. It's changing. So it's not just a labelling issue, important though that is, it's how labelling can actually help to inform the food producers about what they might do to change actually what's in their products. So I think actually, despite the challenge, despite a very healthy debate and long may it go on, um, I think there is some progress being made. As with anything, it's about how we sustain that progress and build onto the next level. And I'd just like to thank Cash. I think it's 10 years uh, work, hard work. Uh, you've made a difference and I congratulate you on that. Uh, but there's plenty of more work to be done. Thank you.